A special episode of the Cardinal Report from Burner Fieldhouse today. I'm Charlie Edward. We're in the Cardinal Room to be joined shortly by the softball team. First, a look at other happenings in North Central Athletics. The baseball team won its recent series with Illinois Wesleyan. Joe Paperone started the scoring with an RBI single early in Game 1, but it was the catcher, Chris Hill, who stole the show, hitting 4 for 5 with 4 RBIs. The team never looked back after a 3-run first inning, winning 9-1. to Brian Poloi continuing his year-long consistency, a complete game performance in which he allowed only one earned run on seven hits to go with seven strikeouts. Poloi improved to four and one on the season. Game two was much of the same, with Nick Brandt hitting three for five and two RBIs, and the bullpen held its own as well. Two innings between Evan Plunk and Jordan Van Dyke yielded only three hits and an earned run en route to a North Central eight to one win. The Cardinals spend this week with matchups against Milliken and Wheaton College. The outdoor opener was prosperous for men's track and field, with the team placing first in eight events, as well as first in a nine-team field. 267.5 points put the Cardinals in first by a long shot. Wheaton was second with 155. Aurora University took third at 118, with Travis Morrison for North Central making things happen. As usual, a personal best in the 10K that he finished in 30 minutes, 10.62 seconds. Luke Winder's 17 feet 3 quarter inches was the best by a Division III outdoor competitor on the year thus far, and won in the event as well as North Central's outdoor freshman record. And Aaron Sabat won the 1500 meter run at 3 minutes 56.31 seconds. The women won a lot of stuff too, taking first in a number of different events. The team's 168 points put it second behind the Thunder, which had 178, while Aurora again third at 140. Lena Baker broke her own North Central varsity record by 8 inches, throwing 181 and 1 sixth inches in the hammer throw. Ebony Stallworth took the shot put at 44, 6 and 3 quarter inches. Liz Composto took the pole vault, clearing 12 feet, 5 and a half inches. And Megan Costanzo's 36 minutes, 5.13 seconds, won the 10K. Madison Renfro tops the 100 meter hurdles at 14.79 seconds. The Cardinals have the Chicagoland Outdoor Championships at the College of DuPage next. The men's tennis team lost its CCIW duel to Carthage College 9-0, a match that took place at the Lake Bluff Racquet Club, which puts North Central at 0-2 in conference play this year. Carthage took a 3-0 advantage early on, winning the first three doubles matches. And Carthage, though, would sweep all six singles matches to beat the Cardinals again 9-0 and drop them to 5-9. Coming up, NCC hosts Purdue University of Calumet. All right, next let's get to the softball team. Manager Jim Kalawiak and then Kirsten Tinkoff and Cesc Portillo all coming up on the Cardinal Report. Please have a seat. I'll be honest. Your resume is not what I'm used to. I know. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need a hard worker. Good. I've got two part-time jobs and to help my parents pay the bills. I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find, cultivate, and train a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. The coach that has led North Central softball to eight CCIW championships is here right now. Coach Jim Kalawiak. Jim, nice to see you. Thanks for being in. Thanks for having me. Appreciate and, it. And at 13 and one, quite a record, sparkling. And you have to be doing something right to be 13-1. and one. Can you pinpoint exactly what that might be? Well, I think we're real fortunate. We have a veteran group, and um, they listen extremely well. They, uh, they work hard, and, um, you know, they've had a lot of success in, the, in recent years. So I think it's all helped. Opening day, 12-1 to one win over Utica. Uh, was there any point, especially during the trip to Florida, that you realized, man, this team could be really good? Well, I mean, I think in the off season we felt we had that potential, but you just never know how things are going to pan out. 
and uh, in recent years we've really been hit with some tough injuries at various points in the season. So that was one of the key things was to be able to go down there and get, um, get some time for everyone and also stay healthy. A big thing in sports is not only how you do when you win by a big margin, but how do you do when you're in a close game? What's the final outcome? You can really judge a team based on that. Your team, uh, recent wins, you had big ones over Kalamazoo, 9-0. Thomas College, 10-0. But in closer games, you always seem to get the win. Is that a very promising sign to see that when it comes down to it, when it's really close and intense, your team comes through in crunch time? I think it's, a, it's important for the players to understand that they're never out of a game. And I think that's their approach. And when you're playing against the strong competition, and we did have some teams down in Florida like that, um, you got to play it right to the last out. And uh, we were down in a few games and we were able still to come back. So that's a real good sign. For three years now, the team has been awfully good. And going into this year, it doesn't seem all too different from last season. Is there something you've been doing coaching-wise to keep the consistency going for such a long stretch? Because it's been since 2012 since the team was, you could say, average. Um, you know, again, I think we got a veteran group. Um, and that really helps. You've got some players that are pretty well accomplished. And I do think we brought in a couple freshmen um, who, who have definitely helped us. So, um, you know, the expectations I think are high going into this season. And while last year's team was so good, 33 and 13, this year's team has a whole lot of new faces. Out of all of them, can you pinpoint a few of them that you think have really stood out this season? Well, I think most people would agree that Corinne Rowe, our, our shortstop, uh, definitely has stood out. She, she hits the ball very hard. Um, she, I think she's got four home runs right now and um, is our leading RBI hitter. Um, she has a tremendous arm mm -hmm. and um, the entire team has responded extremely well to her. Um, I, I think the two freshman pitchers have done a decent job up to this point, Sarah Esposito and Kaylee Hayton. Um, and then Jenna Tronier in center field. Um, She's actually playing behind Olivia Gothels right now. Um, but she's gotten some time here and there, and she's also been able to contribute as well. So I think she has a very promising side as well. Corinne Rowe is kind of like the Bo Jackson of the team, being a two-sport athlete. But going back to what you said about her being uh, someone that's been well-received by the team, does that go back to uh, who she is in the locker room? Well, I just think she gets along well with everybody. You know, some people have a personality that, that kind of attracts others. They're like a magnet. and. Um, Everyone seems to, to get along extremely well with her. She relates well to everyone, and uh, that certainly helps, especially when you're a new person coming into a program. What does it take to be a two-sport athlete, especially in the modern world where every sport, there's so much attention placed to detail and workouts? It's got to be grueling for her. I would say so. It, um, it's, it takes a matter of um, managing time very well because the study factor, obviously, is going to come into play there. So you have to be highly organized, I believe, to do that. In terms of her ability, she is very, well, very good in basketball also. And, um, you know, it's difficult, probably as difficult or more today than ever before to do that. As of April 2nd, your team had five players hitting over 400. Corinne was one of them. Uh, the other four, awfully impressive too. Is that just due to a hot start? Well, uh, people like Kirsten Tinkoff, you know, they've been She's been uh, all regional the last couple of years, so that kind of speaks to the ability level that she has. And, um, you know, Kayla Antle had a big year for us last year as well. And uh, Amanda Walker's been a two time all regional player um, as well. So, you know, we've got some people again that are proven. So I'm not, again, totally surprised by that. The thing is, though, as the season goes on, some of those averages are going to come down a bit, mm -hmm. obviously. So, what have you done coaching wise, though, to help? hitters maintain such success? I mean, it's not going to last, obviously. I mean, it's tough to keep it over 400, but what do you have to do as a coach to keep them in the mindset that they can still be good throughout the entire year? Well, besides our daily drill work, um, you know, we do talk about specific pitchers that we're going to face and things that we've been able to chart off them um, and their past performance. Um, the mental side of it comes into play as well. You know, we have some things that we take a look at to try to get players to understand. you got to be able to handle ups and downs because it's going to happen. Um, the key thing is to try to be consistent and, and persistent. Kirsten Tinkoff, the CCIW Player of the Week, March 31st. 9 for 15, a 600 average, 7 RBIs, 355 average last year. Uh, but this year, are we seeing even more from her? 
Um, I definitely think she's certainly capable of that. You know, the last two years she's done very well and she's been hurt. Uh, she had some, some hip problems and, and last year she also uh, suffered a, um, a blow to the head in one of our games and uh, she's responded so well and uh, I think this year she's finally 100% healthy. How does she compare to some of the top players in the game right now? We know Laura Bonds of uh, Illinois Wesleyan hitting 615 right now. When you compare Tinkoff to the top players in the game, do we mention her name in the same breath? Oh, I would say so. I think she's right up there with them. She's uh, very good in the clutch, a um, good all-around player. Um, she's very consistent is the thing that I would probably say is the best description of her. Okay, still want to get some more with you on some other players in a moment. More with Jim Kalawiak on the Cardinal Report. Huntington. Every proper bear knows that the right fit means everything. Especially when it comes to car seats. Oh, really? I just did what any bear would do. So know for sure that your child is in the right car seat for their age and size. I like it. To learn more, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. Oh, hello there. Oh, where's that bear? <coughs> Back with Jim Kalawiak, the manager of the women's softball team. Uh, Coach, this season, you know, we look at Kirsten Tinkoff. I asked you how she compares to some of the best players in the league. How about your team in general? How do you compare to some of the best teams in the league? Well, traditionally, Illinois Wesleyan, Augustana, Carthage, and ourselves have been pretty much uh, in the top four for quite some time. And I don't think that's probably going to change any during the course of this year. In fact, I think currently the Augustana, Wesleyan, and ourselves are all ranked in the top 25 in the country. So um, it's going to be a tough league all the way through the end, and uh, I, I think we all are, are pretty evenly matched. You seem pretty big on recruiting, scouting, all the, the works. Have you had a chance to watch the number one ranked team, Tufts University? We saw a little bit uh, down in Florida of them, not a whole lot. We did play them last year down in Florida. Um, we lost to them one to nothing. Um, and they still look pretty strong. They did lose some good players on that team, but they, they still have their, their number one pitcher, so they're going to definitely be formidable. One spot where your team may have proven uh, even better than Tots is in speed. It seems stolen base is a big thing for you. Olivia Gothel's six stolen bases, that is twice as much as any individual player on Tufts' roster. Do you think that's a place where you might have a lot of teams beat out? Well, it is something we've talked about trying to improve upon. Um, we didn't run nearly as much last year, and there were, there were many reasons for it. We're hoping to have a little more greater balance this year with that. With baseball and softball, a big thing for a pitcher is getting a lot of run support. Pitching this season, if you look at your entire staff, everyone is having such a great year on paper. But how much of that has to do with just the fact that they're getting so much run support? Well, I definitely think that goes hand in hand. And when you score a lot of runs, it takes a little bit of pressure off your pitchers and your defense. Um, so we want to continue the run support, obviously, but there are going to be times when, you know, the pitchers are going to have to still bail themselves out a little bit and, uh, and the defense is going to have to make plays, you know, day in and day out. So you still have to click in all areas. With the second best batting average, though, in the CCIW, it doesn't seem to happen too often, but has there been a time this season that you can pinpoint a case where the pitchers were the reason you were able to stay in a game and then ultimately win it? Well, I think the Whitewater game we played down in Florida, um, 
you know, Andrea Starr did a tremendous job. And uh, if you think about it, since the time she's been here, um, you know, I think every year she's gotten a little better. And, um, you know, she holds up against most people, I think. Between uh, Kaylee Hayton, Andrea Starr, as you mentioned, and Sarah Esposito, uh, we mentioned what you think you're doing right with the batters and throughout the lineup with hitting. What do you have to do coaching-wise with the pitchers, though, to keep them in the right mentality? Well, Courtney Corinne, who's our grad assistant, does a very nice job with the pitchers. And uh, she's constantly trying to challenge them a little bit and get them to understand the mental side of it as much as the physical. Oftentimes, just as in baseball, you know, some days you're going to have better stuff than others. And um, there's some days where your ball's not breaking as much and your off speed are, is not working. So that's where your spotting of pitches is so crucial. Out of your three pitchers, we know Star is the clear standout, but you have two freshmen between Hayden and Esposito. What's the scouting report on those two? Well, I think they're a little different. Uh, Kaylee throws a little harder than Sarah, and uh, Sarah's more of an off-speed pitcher. Um, and they're, they're still trying to refine their game, but up to this point, I think they've made very good progress. And the, kink, the key thing is they have to understand is they have to continue to try and improve as the year goes on. Is it exciting, though, to have a pitching staff composed mostly of young players, I mean, two freshmen, uh, performing so well? It's got to be great to know that in the future you can probably expect to be pretty locked down at the pitching position. Well, we hope so. The thing about all sports today is you, you just don't know what's going to happen from year to year. And uh, we hope they all be back next year and that they can continue to get better. You have Beloy, Elmhurst, and the University of Chicago this week. What are your expectations in those matchups? Well, uh, I know Beloit in the last couple of years has gotten better and better. So, you know, we're expecting a tough game with them. Elmhurst, we're in the conference again, and um, we had two tough ball games with Elmhurst last year. We have to go there this year. So we did see them down in Florida, and they definitely are a better team than they were a year ago. And then Chicago is traditionally tough. So I think all three opponents this week are going to definitely present a tremendous challenge. Especially knowing that last week, uh, you had all your games essentially postponed or canceled, and now this week you got to go right back to it. How did that affect you as a coach in terms of you know preparing schedules and keeping them on pace with the, the pace of the season? Well, you have to think a little bit about how you're going to go about it when you have the rain scenario, and um, you know how do you want to monitor your practices? And you know I think we uh, we talk amongst ourselves as a coaching staff, and I think we came up with the best situation for us. And, um, you know, I think the players deserve the credit, though, because they were able to maintain the focus going in the Millican this past weekend. And you saw on the trip to Florida, every day in Florida, there's a game. And it, there's really no time for a break. So I think that's proof that the team is also capable of playing in long stretches of time and, and showing off that they're a very well-conditioned team. That part of it's not as difficult to uh, get them ready because uh, the intensity level and the excitement of kicking off the year playing in a warm climate against the competition that you have always seems to motivate everybody. We go back to your maintained success over the last few years. How much of players like, you know, you go to your seniors this year between Tinkoff and your pitchers and like Andrea Starr, for instance, how much do your older players have an impact on uh, keeping the younger players bright and fresh and uh, maintaining that consistency throughout the years? Well, I definitely think there's a factor there. Um, you want every class to pass something along to the one that's going to follow. And I think uh, Velasta Manja and uh, Taylor Ryan uh, did a very fine job. And uh, Manja definitely had an influence on, on Andrea Starr and, and so many other players here because she obviously just didn't pitch either. She was a very good hitter. And, um, you know, there's an influence. And, and, and she's still around. She just uh, finished up last term. so. Um, they still stay, stay in touch, and, and there's definitely a carryover effect there. With the trip to Florida being so dominant, you won all the games, and you come back and you lose the first game. Can you attribute that at all to maybe a little bit of overconfidence from being so good for such a long stretch of time? I really don't think it had anything to do with overconfidence. Um, when you come back from the warm weather to the colder weather, there's always an adjustment period. And although it really wasn't a bad day, the sun was out and there was uh, very little wind that day, there still was a 30, 35 degree drop in temperature. Um, the bottom line is we just didn't play well. We certainly had a chance to win that game. And our opponent that day, St. Mary's, is, is a decent team. Um, they made some nice plays on us. 
we just didn't play up to our capability and uh, unfortunately we, we lost one there. Hopefully we'll learn from that though and uh, they'll always go out there with a, an attitude that, hey, we definitely can play with anyone but we can also be beaten if we're not sharp. And they did come back and win in game two and hopefully uh, this uh, upcoming week with so many games on the schedule they can keep finding ways to do just that. That's the whole key right now is you want to keep playing while you're playing well. Mm -hmm. All right, well thanks for being on coach. Appreciate it. Coming up, Kirsten Tinkoff and Sans Portillo on TCR. So they say it's a man's world? Well, I don't see anybody's name on it. While well, they were out doing their thing, we slowly changed all that. Today, women can do anything men can do. And there's one thing we're even better at. Back with softball players Kirsten Tinkoff and Sam Sportillo. Nice to see you guys. Nice to see you. And we welcome you to the Cardinal Room. I, you come back from Florida where you play all your games and there's no postponed games or canceled games and suddenly you're back here in Illinois and everything is canceled. Did that throw you <laughs> off at all, Kirsten? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, we were expecting to play a bunch of games and they got canceled. That's a bummer, especially when you come off with 10-0. We want to play, we want to get back on the field. So, yeah, it's a little bit of a, of a bummer, but we're back in it now, so. It says uh, on the road trip to Florida, undefeated, and you come back and you lose your first game. Is it, is it tough to come back from Florida and you were playing every day and things were going so smoothly and you're feeling really confident and then suddenly you have to come back home and play and maybe you're a little bit off your game and you lose to St. Mary's because of a lack of concentration, perhaps? Um. Probably. I think it's um, it's definitely something hard to come back from, but we came back and it was, the concentration came back. It clearly did. In game <laughs> two, you won seven to four. Yes. What was the difference between game one and game two, Kirsten? Um, I think we weren't, um, we, we thought that we could do a lot better th than we did in the first game. So in the second game, we kind of took that energy that we didn't have in the first one and took it to the second one. So. What was the week in Florida like? Because it's not really a vacation. It sounds like it would be one because Florida is a beautiful place, but every day you're playing a game and you don't really have time to do anything else, I would presume. Is that true, Sess? Kind of, yes, but at least for me anyway, softball is kind of like a vacation. It's just like an escape from, you know, classes and everything, so it was a lot of fun being out there. I always ask when people go on trips, what was your biggest takeaway? Going undefeated on the trip, what was your biggest takeaway? Was it just a simple confidence boost? Uh, yeah, I think I think it was important for us to get those ten wins, especially with two freshman pitchers. It was exciting to get those two those ten wins and uh, come back and have fun as a team and do everything. So you know, in both of your tenures with the team, the team has really never struggled. It's been a good team every year, very consistent. How have you both been able to help maintain that success? Sess? Um, I think probably just the the energy all of us bring, and especially the the energy that the seniors have as a whole help bring that help bring everyone together. Kirsten, you are currently uh, sixth in CCIW batting average. In softball and baseball, it's so hard, especially in these sports, to maintain that rate of success on a year to year basis. But you've been able to do it. Uh, what have you been doing? Is it in the batting cages? Is it start there? Is it the coaching? Uh, I just have a lot of confidence at the plate and just know that whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. So if I hit the ball well, I hit the ball well. If I don't, I don't. Sess, you were uh, among five players with a batting average north of 400 before uh, the series with Milliken. You hit over three in that series, but uh, you know the team still won 19 to six. You won the second game too. Looking at the team as a whole, with so many players hitting over 400 this year, is it 
is it inflation? Is it, a, is it a thing where because everyone is hitting so well, it takes pressure off subsequently everyone in the lineup to perform? I believe so. I think when everyone's on, we're on. So we're just having fun at that point. We're not really thinking. And it just, it's a domino effect. So that's from 2013 to 2014. Now, 2015, steady climb your numbers. 304 batting average to begin. Then you went to 329. And this year, 387. Have you noticed these improvements? Have you felt them in your game? And if so, uh, what have you done to make this improvement? Um, no, I, d I didn't actually know that. Um, <laughs> I don't really look at stats, but she's she knows I'm just mm. oblivious sometimes. Um, but I think it's just the coaching and the team and the fact that if I do my job, then it all falls into place. Speaking of gaudy numbers, uh, Kirsten, seven RBIs the week of March 31st helped you get named the uh, CCIW Player of the Week for that time, but you were also hitting 600 during that time. It seems you're a player that, regardless of whether or not there are runners in scoring position, you really seem to take the same approach to every at bat. Is that true? Yeah, I just know that I need to do what's best for the team and need to get up there and do my best for everyone else on the team, and that's mostly what I'm focused on. With so many of your teammates, also hitting around 400 this year. Mm -hmm. Have you been sharing some of your secrets with your team? <laughs> How is this all happening? All I don't months? have many secrets, but yeah, we're doing great as a team. We're a great hitting team this year. We're looking pretty pretty good on the offensive side. We got to keep it rolling though. So seeing as this team is so good, and I mentioned all of the teams you've really been on have been so good, uh, what makes this team different from the others? Is, is this team better than those teams, do you think? I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say better. I think just this year, we have such a, a strong senior leadership class that that's helping a lot. Kirsten, is the formula for success over your career at North Central, has it mostly been the same or does something, something change every year? I think team chemistry has a lot to do with success. I think um, our sophomore year we had a ton of key team chemistry and then last year we were trying to rebuild it and, and this year we've got it again and I think that that's really helped in our success and doing well and when we have fun with each other on the team we do well. With all the cancellations, you now you go back into this week and suddenly you have a whole slew of games that you're going to have to deal with. Uh, does that throw you off at all going into this week? No, I think we played a, a great game on Saturday and I think we're going to take that into this week and be fired up and ready to go and play those games as hard as we can. Sess, what is the outlook for the team right now? Um, I think we're all excited to finally get these games going because we've been canceled so much. I think we're just ready to get out there and go. All right, well, good luck this week, and thanks Thank for being you. on the show. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, the softball team will spend a lot of this week on the road with matchups at Beloit College and Elmhurst before coming back home to take on the University of Chicago. For scores and news, go to NorthCentralCardinals.com or follow at NCTV17 on Twitter. Thanks for watching the Cardinal Report.